Hey, what's up? Welcome to Dregs, the late night post-work tasting where I bring you my favorite bottle that we opened here at Press Napa Valley. And I was totally gonna skip tonight, I'll admit it. I was super, super tired. It's like 12.30 at night and it's been a really, really long day. I've been traveling all morning. I've been up since four and I was about to hit the road and then I was like, you know, I should give this wine another taste before I leave like I always do. And I'm so, so glad I did because this wine wowed when I opened it, but now, oh my God. So I'll back up. This wine is a 1960, let's see in here, 1960 Bolo BV George Latour, which is the best that they were making, uh, still make today. Um, BV really at the forefront of uh, technology when it comes to winemaking here in Napa Valley. A lot of that, most of that, all of that in large part due to Andre Chalachev who was brought here by the founder of BV to really improve the quality of winemaking, just to add things like sterilization, to add things like new French oak. Um, Chalachev was unbelievably instrumental in, in why Napa Valley winemaking progressed the way that it did. And a lot of what was happening is, is that post-prohibition period when wines needed to start traveling a little bit more, they, they found themselves without a lot of quality. Telechef was enlisted to really support that and start bringing all of the technological advances that were happening in Europe over to Napa Valley. So this is what you see here in BV. This is 1960. This is like the bread and butter of what I do here at Press as a sommelier, which is uh, open really cool old bottles of Napa Valley wine. And this is, this is a great example of why I love what I do because we get to try really, really cool stuff like this and sell really great bottles of wine like this BV 1960. How cool is that? Um, so I will say BV like as a whole from 50s, 60s, 70s era really always has this sort of almost port-like oxidized nose and it's really deceiving and it, it's happened to me a number of times where I get the glass and I smell it and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I think it's corked or I'm sorry I think it's oxidized or I think it's maybe um, maybe just a little bit uh, maybe just saw a little bit too much air I don't maybe it's just past its prime a little bit and then you get onto the palate and the palate is stern and it's kind of brooding and it, it has life in it and there's a little bit of lift and then all of a sudden this wine that smells like it could be kind of porty and a little bit oxidized goes from that to this like blooming blossoming flower and it kind of comes in on itself and they're really really crazy crazy wines and this is a perfect example of that so at first glance I stuck my nose in the glass and and even now it almost has a port like character to it so when I talked about those in those videos that I did for Karen McNeil on her channel about wines sometimes smelling a little bit porty but being really really stern on the palate and I'm sorry if this gets a little bit complicated sometimes what happens is air can almost make the wine go from feeling like it's gonna fall apart to totally back together and this is a great example now I will say I did not decant this wine because I know the guests that who drank this wine and I tend to drink a little bit more slowly. So decanting a wine would really uh, force this wine into a direction that it didn't want to be in for too long. So you don't want to decant a wine for, for very long that like this, because it can be a little bit fragile and it doesn't want too much air. But I will say upon revisiting, which I'm going to talk about right now, it is an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal bottle of wine. So let's get back into the dregs of this bottle, which is super, super cool. Mm, it still has that kind of like toffee, caramel, um, really floral, but there's also this element of, of like baking spices, a little bit of like cumin and cardamom. It's a very, very, what we call like secondary, tertiary, but a lot, a lot of fruit. It's a beautiful, beautiful, rich, red, ripe fruit. Um, we were commenting all night about how much fruit is still left on this wine and how ripe it feels. We always talk about the ripeness of wines in Napa Valley and how some of the older wines from the older uh, classics era, 60s, 70s era, weren't as ripe. They didn't have higher alcohol. But this wine, I don't know what the alcohol, the alcohol is only stating 12.5, which is probably correct, but it smells pretty ripe, which is very, very interesting. So um, getting all of that really nice, ripe, beautiful red, black fruit, all of those spices and of course that sort of like chicory caramel toffee thing going on in here so palette oh such a wild wine oh it's so crazy this nose is like nothing like the palette the palette takes on a tiny tiny bit of the toffee at the very end but 
very together, very dark, very stern, very brooding. And what I love about these wines is they really just come together. They're precise, they're focused. They have an intensity to them. They have a richness to them. Um, this wine was a fairly light bodied wine and, and we talk about wines with this much age not having a ton of body. This is not one of those wines. Texturally, it's an incredible, incredible bottle of wine. Just has a ton of vibrance, a ton of life, a ton of, um, a ton of fullness and texture. It's absolutely stunning. Beautiful, round, earthy at the very back. So much fruit, unbelievable amounts of fruit, gobs of fruit, really great acid. And now we're kind of getting into the, the dregsy part, the good, the chewy bits, which you're gonna see in my teeth in just a second. Um, but just an absolutely stunning bottle of wine. And I'll just have you guys look at the color. I don't know how well you can see it, but um, definitely still has a ton of color, but very garnet. Um, looks like it's probably got some age on it, but if I were blinding this wine, I'm not sure that I would go all the way back to 1960. Um, Maybe I get there. Gosh, look how much how much drags is left in the glass. And I will say I did serve it in this small white wine glass. This wine likes to kind of be contained, be together, um, and not get too much air too soon. So just a super cool bottle of wine. And I will say it went next to a bottle of Bordeaux, showed incredibly well next to a bottle of first growth Bordeaux, followed uh and then it followed by uh, a series of 07, so 07 Harlan, 07 Colgan, 07 Abreu, um, all of which showed really, really well. My favorite being the Harlan, uh, as far as the completeness of the wine, and my favorite, my other favorite being the Abreu, as far as the intensity and structure and the freshness of that wine, the longevity of that wine. So just to give you an idea of the, of the lineup that we had for the evening. Um, I am gonna go to bed before my sleepy eyes close. And uh, I hope to see you all tomorrow for another episode of Dregs. I'll be with you uh, the next five nights before we close. Um, we are closing for a few weeks. We always close for a few weeks here at Press. And when I come back to you, I will be uh, running the show here. but. I will not be going away for the month of January. If you're not, I will still be around talking to you guys, taking you on some adventures. I've got two brand new sommeliers coming in from the East Coast, which uh, hopefully hopefully you'll meet when I um, when they get here. They're super, super sweet and super awesome and very, very talented. So I look forward to introducing you to them and bringing you more wines. <sighs> Good night, my friends. I'm super excited that I got to taste this with you. This is awesome.